friends. Welcome back to the History Obscura Reading Room. I am your hostess, Mandy Gardner. Settle in. Today we learn the story of a great man who has been largely lost to our collective consciousness. His was an important story, and I hope it moves you like it does me. Once upon a time, the year 1548 to be exact, Giordano Bruno was born near Naples, Italy. Once grown, Bruno became a philosopher, astronomer, and mathematician whose theories often crossed into the occult. His work was quite controversial and never accepted by the Catholic Church whose constant harassment caused Bruno to move across the continent several times. You see, much like Copernicus and a few others before his time, Giordano Bruno believed that the Sun lay at the center of our solar system. The powerful Catholic Church, however, was much more supportive of the Aristotelian model of the universe in which the Earth was the central feature of the system. Proponents of theories outside of that norm were subjected at best to ridicule and at worst to torture. Bruno was perfectly aware of the particular scientific leanings of the church since he studied theology within the Dominican order in Naples. He was even ordained as a Catholic priest in 1572. Despite his religious education and position within the Catholic hierarchy, Bruno was spiritually unsatisfied with many facets of Christianity, and he was not shy about voicing those opinions. He was quite outspoken about his disbelief in the Holy Trinity, an integral feature of his own religion, which stated that God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost are three separate pieces of the same ultimate divinity. Within that same dogmatic problem, the philosopher rejected the idea that such a creature as God could become human, thereby bridging the unbreachable gap between the divine and the mundane. Bruno's impassioned grumblings against the doctrine of his own priesthood did not go unnoticed, and a few years after earning his priestly robes, Bruno found himself at the center of a heresy investigation. Before the Italian Inquisition could call for his arrest, Bruno fled Italy for Geneva, Switzerland. There, he sought the company of the city's Calvinists, a type of Protestant group that adhered specifically to the philosophies of John Calvin. Protestantism was sweeping through Europe thanks to the works of Calvin, Martin Luther, and the Swiss philosopher Huldrych Zwingli. Each of these theologists and their supporters agreed on a few basic rules that differed from Catholic doctrine. One of the most controversial tenets of Protestantism was the belief that the bread and wine given during Holy Communion was not actually transformed into the blood and body of Christ during the ceremony. Imagine! Protestants such as John Calvin and Martin Luther believed instead that the bread and wine were merely metaphoric representations of the body of Christ. It isn't known whether Giordano Bruno actually became a Calvinist though he did altogether abandon the Dominican order. Though his evolving religious views may have had characteristics in common with Protestantism, Bruno's camaraderie with the Swiss Calvinists was probably based on their similar ongoing feud with Catholic Europe. Different interpretations of biblical details such as these were immensely important during the Middle Ages and early modern era in Europe as Giordano Bruno well knew. Even in the Calvinist haven of Geneva, he encountered serious criticism of his developing theologies. An attempt to receive a pardon for his heretical commentary from local representatives of the Catholic Church went badly, but Bruno still managed to find employment in Switzerland as a proofreader. 
Eventually, his outspokenness and nonconformist beliefs placed him at the center of legal trouble again. Bruno published a manuscript that harshly criticized the work of one Antoine de la Fay, French theologian and professor at the College of Geneva. This criticism led to the arrest of Bruno and the book's publisher, and when they were released, he left Switzerland for France. He had much greater luck there. The same year, he found employment as a professor of philosophy at the University of Toulouse, Bruno soon came under the patronage of Henry III, King of France, whose influence allowed him to passionately pursue his scientific theories of the universe without fear of repercussions. Said he, I got me such a name that King Henry III summoned me one day to discover from me if the memory which I possessed was natural or acquired by magic art. I satisfied him that it did not come from sorcery but from organized knowledge, and following this, I got a book on memory printed entitled The Shadows of Ideas, which I dedicated to His Majesty. Forthwith, he gave me an extraordinary lectureship with a salary. The Shadows of Ideas was not a theological work, but a focused study of mnemonics. Memory improvement techniques were another fundamental part of Bruno's scientific studies, and his complex memory wheel described in Shadows is still a part of modern university curriculum. The wheel is comprised of multiple layers of rings marked by Latin letters. To strengthen memory, one must use this wheel to memorize sequences of letters by assigning each a specific identity, action, and other details. While in France, Bruno began once more to seriously pursue his astronomical studies. As before, he began with the Copernican heliocentric model of the universe. Copernicus had himself likely evaded torture and death at the hands of the authoritarian church because of this theory, only due to his natural death before the publication and sale of De Revolutionibus. Unfortunately, Bruno had the unlucky fate to live contemporaneously alongside his own publications, including the highly controversial On the Infinite Universe and Worlds in 1584. By that time, he was living in London as the assistant of French ambassador Michel de Castelnau. England was a Protestant country in which the Catholic Church no longer had any authority, and so during his two and a half years there, Bruno wrote and published as many as eight books. His time in England was likely spent mostly in solitude, however, as his theories seemed not to have suitably impressed his English contemporaries. Nevertheless, Bruno's seemingly wild theories on astronomy and humankind's place in the universe were perhaps too outlandish for any contemporary audience, scholarly or otherwise. Where Copernicus's theory had ended, Bruno's began, and kept right on going. Unaffected by a personal attachment to church doctrine, the Italian astronomer let his collected data speak loudly for itself. In Infinite Universe, he surmised that not only did the Earth revolve around the Sun, but that the universe was endless and altogether without a central feature. Furthermore, Bruno wondered if the stars he viewed in the night sky might be entire alien suns around which other planets revolved. If that were possible, Bruno wondered, then perhaps there may be alien forms of life inhabiting such planets. Bruno refused to bend to the whims of the church, who ultimately charged him with heresy in 1592. At that point, Bruno generally seems to have been a non-Christian spiritualist who believed that God and heaven were not separate from reality, but perhaps part of the physical world. He did not believe in the existence of hell or the eternal damnation of the soul, nor did he find personal truth in the story of the divine Christ or the Virgin Mary. For Bruno, the journey of the soul involved re-entry into the new body of a person, or perhaps an animal. This was a major source of contention between Bruno and the Roman Inquisition, 
who incited a trial against him that lasted seven years. Upon his return to Italy as a mnemonics teacher in the late 16th century, Bruno was turned in to the Italian Inquisition by none other than his employer. He was held and questioned in Venice, but as the trials continued, he was taken to Rome. Pope Clement VIII officially declared him a heretic at the beginning of 1600, and Bruno was sentenced to death. He was burned at the stake in Rome that same year. This is one of the many insightful paragraphs penned by Giordano Bruno himself, translated into English, of course. In space, there are countless constellations, suns, and planets. We see only the suns because they give light. The planets remain invisible for they are small and dark. There are also numberless Earths circling around their suns. Let's leave it there, shall we? Hug your creatures close tonight, and remember, celebrate intelligence in whatever strange new form it might take. Good night. Mm -hmm.